Lord, we come before you acknowledging you are our God. And beside you there is no other. And Lord, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving. Lord, we're careful and we bless your name. For your name is worthy to be praised. And Father, we give you glory in this house. We magnify you in this house. Lord, because you're worthy of it. You're worthy. You're worthy of it, Lord. You're worthy of it. All of your goodness on our life. All of your mercy on our life. Father, have your way in this assembly today. Have your way in this worship experience today. Be so exalted in here today. Lord, we give you praise. Bless, Lord, those that are viewing on social media. Bless them, Lord, right where they stand. Let there be a transfer of, oh God, of your blessing, your anointing. Rest in them. In Jesus' name, bless us today, and we shall be blessed. Heal us today, and we shall be healed. Set us free today, and we shall be free. Somebody give God some glory. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say in Jesus' name. Come on, seal your prayer in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Beloved, so much is going on in this world. Yes, Lord, so much is going on in this world. So much, beloved. You look at the news and social media, you will see and bear witness. But God is looking for people that would give him glory. God is looking for people that won't be stopped. They won't be distracted. God is looking for people. Are you that people? I say, are you that person? Are you that person that God can get the glory out of? Are you that person that God can get the glory out of? I wish you asked the person next to you, are you that person that God can get the glory out of? Yes, God. Beloved, we thank God for you today. We give God praise for all of you this morning. Joining in with us, the inhabitants of Christ Ministries here in Tampa, Florida, where we exalt in the name of the Lord. Giving God the glory from the neighborhoods to the nations. Yes, Lord. Giving God the praise. We thank God for you. Beloved, we thank God for our first lady. We give God praise for her. Yes. yes, Lord, we give God praise for her. Yes, Lord, we thank God for our dear mother being with us today. We give God praise for her in Jesus' name. We give God praise for all our social media viewing audience that's tuned in with us as we exalt the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord, we're going to have some church today. We're going to give God some praise. So if you have, if you came here with your seatbelts on, you need to unfasten your seatbelts. Tell your neighbor to unfasten your seatbelt. You have to be ready. Don't come here and get saddled to sit down. Yes, Lord, you don't need your seatbelt on in here. You need to unloose that seatbelt and get ready to pop up. Anybody ready to pop up and give God some praise? Come on, praise team, and take us into the presence of God. Come on, church, put your hands together.
know that he is awesome. He is great. He's a mighty redeemer. He's a strong tower. He's our righteousness. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. The next part just says, you are awesome. Come on, let's sing it. You are awesome. 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 You are awesome.
we have to be careful of the rushing to move on. But there's a time in our life to where we just sit and settle and rest in the presence of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. May you find your praise in here that's pleasing. In here, may you be exalted. May you be exalted in here. And there would be so much respect for God. So much honor for God. Anybody honor God's presence today? Anybody honor God's presence today? Anybody honor God today? Everybody always talking about going to heaven. But they're never talking about wanting to see God. They want to go to the location but don't want to see him. When he's giving us himself now. Yes, Lord. Don't ever get caught flat, beloved, in your praise. Don't ever rush giving God glory. Don't ever miss a moment in your praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let honor be it for God in this house. Let honor, we honor you in this house, Lord. Yes, Lord. We honor you in this house. Yes, Lord. Say glory to God. Glory to God. And you viewing in social media land, you give God praise in your house. May God find honor right where you stand. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. God is faithful. Yes, Lord. Come on, you may be seated in the presence of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, God is so good. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He is so good. He is so good. Yes, Lord. If we really in tune with our life, we'll see the goodness of God. If we are really in tune with our life, we'll see the goodness of God. God is good. Come on and tell somebody next to you how good God is. Come on, tell him God is good. Come on, tell him out of your mouth. Tell him God is good. Tell him God is good. Come on, tell him God is good. Everybody in here. Come on, tell him God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is awesome. Yes, yes. Tell him. Yes, Lord. He's always doing stuff in our life as a witness for you to show how good he is and tell someone how good he is. Come on, beloved, it's offering time in the house of God. Yes, Lord, you didn't clap your hands for that. I didn't hear that. And we got a little quiet. It's, I said it's offering time. This is where we continue in worship. We worship the Lord with our gifts. We, this is still worship. We're still bringing our gifts to the Lord. Somebody say this is still worship. This is still worship. We're worshiping the Lord in our giving. You know, sometimes the body of Christ and ministries have made a bad and negative connotation about giving. To where it's the people struggle with giving. But don't let that be you, beloved. Because of someone else's unethical decisions or, or, or wasteful decisions, don't let that impact your blessing. Somebody say, my blessing. my blessing. Don't let somebody else 
decisions impact your blessing. When we worship the Lord in our giving, this is between you and your God. Yes, Lord. This is between you and your God. Yes, and if you have a family, this is between you, your God, and your family. Yes. Somebody says it's offering time. It's offering time. Don't ever miss an opportunity to worship God with you and your family. You and your God. Don't ever take this time lightly. Don't let this, don't take this time lightly. Yes, Lord. It's offering time. We offer a few different ways to give. We offer text to give. And these methods will be shown on the screen behind me and on our social media uh, account. We also offer our, our cash app. Did I say the text to give number? The text to give number is 1844-468-3549. And again, that is viewed. If you look at it, it's 1844-468-3549. You text that number and follow the secured prompts. And our cash app is dollar sign IC Ministries Tampa. That's dollar sign IC Ministries Temple. And those in the house of God will serve you uh, shortly. Amen. You know, I was thinking as we was, you know, I was thinking about living in our inheritance. And as we talk about worshiping God in our offering with you and your God, you and your children. I want you to think about living in your inheritance. Yes, living. Living in this how personal God expects us to live in. This, this inheritance that he's given us. Now some of us, we live a life not expecting to leave anything behind. We will we'll be here as parents. We'll be here as uncles. We'll be here as, as aunts. We'll be his grandparents and not have a plan to leave anything behind. And that's a selfish way of living. But I thank God that he didn't leave us or he didn't have that mentality. He had a mentality that I'm going to leave an inheritance for who? My children. I'm going to leave an inheritance for my children to live in. And God's inheritance is enough for you. And it's a legacy blessing. This, uh, this blessing is not just for you. Because God, when God blesses you, it's too much just for you to live in. So that's why even the blessing that God placed on your life is too large just for you. This thing is like a cup that runneth over. Amen. God's blessing is like a cup. Look at Proverbs 3, 9 through, th uh, 9 through 12. And I want to read that in the New and Living Translation. Yes, Lord, somebody shout increase. Increase. Yes, Lord, somebody say my inheritance. My inheritance. Yes, this is what we're saying things and we're decreeing things and we're living in things. Don't you want to live in increase? Let me ask that one more time because that was a, that, I don't know what happened. Did everybody walk out and leave? Do you want to live in increase? Yes, Lord. Do you want to live in your inheritance? Yes, this is where you have to believe and live in. We have to decide to live in this increase. Yes, we have to decide to live in our what? Inheritance. Yes. yes. We got to be concerned regarding what's being established in our life, beloved. There's things that are being established in our life. And we're just, we're, we're like little red riding hood, just prancing around. And not the wolf is devouring your finances. The wolf is, is devouring your prosperity. The wolf is devouring your increase. Why? Because we're not concerned enough 
to, to see what God has said about me. You got something that God left on record for you to use to fight against what, the wolf. Yes. Proverbs 3 and 9 through 12. This is in the New and Living Translation. He said, honor the Lord with what? Well. With your what? Well. He's already declared something that's for you. He didn't tell you to come to this place. It's already, he said, honor the Lord when not what's coming. He's, he said, honor the Lord with your well. This is the place where we supposed to be living in. This is not a place where we're coming to, but this is a place of expectation that we are living in. Amen. Amen. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with what? Uh-uh. No, not, not after you pay your bills. Not after you, you not, not think about God after you got your money and pennies. After you got, no, 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 no. He said, he, he said, no, no. He said, uh, give the honor the Lord after you go to the state fair. He said, honor the Lord after you, you, uh, go to your, uh, your, buy your car and go into your vacation. Then he said, give, give him after. Did he say that? No. Oh, he didn't say that. What did he say? For those that are living in that place of wealth. And wealth, it goes beyond finances because this is a place of mentality. This is not a poor man's mentality. This is not a spirit of poverty mentality. But wealth is a spirit. And you can be wealthy and not, and not have a lot of money, but you can be wealthy in, in peace. You can be wealthy in love. You can be wealthy in joy. But this is a place of expectation that God wants and expects us to live in. This is part of your inheritance. Somebody says my inheritance. My inheritance. But we have to honor the Lord with your wealth and with the what part? The best part of everything what? Everything you produce. Let me let the word preach to you. Can I do that? Can I let the word preach? Yes, but honor the Lord with your wealth. And the best part of everything you produce, everything you produce, then you will have, then he will, then he will what? Fill your what? With what else? And what? With what? Will what? With what? Do you see any any poverty in that? Do you see any poor, any any anything that's that's that represents poor? Not no. Look at look at the eleventh verse. Come on, let's go there. What? Help me read this. My child, what? Uh uh. Now, does that take discipline? Does that take? Now, I didn't say this. I love the word discipline, but he said what? My child. He's taught my child. We're talking about inheritance. So he said, "Come here, son. Come here, daughter. My child, don't reject the Lord's what." Discipline. There's a discipline in living like this. Those that spend money and use their love and use their peace and use their substance just wastefully, they live a life of undiscipline. But we have to live a life disciplined. Somebody say discipline. discipline. Come on and let's go further. Y'all ready to go further? Amen. And what is that? And what? Uh-uh. And what? When who corrects you? When he, not the preacher, not not the, the mother, not the, the whoever, the prophet, but when who corrects you? Don't be upset. Don't get in your what? Your feelings. Don't get in your emotions. When he corrects you, don't do that. Now look, what does the 12 verse say? For, for the Lord what? Who? Those who what? He loves just as what else? Corrects a child in what? In whom he touched somebody. It's all in love. That's why he wants you. He, he expects this to happen in love. He expects this to happen in love. This is this, this what God, we talk so much about the things that we go through. Of the things that are, we talk so much about our bills and our, our, our issues. 
It's that God has placed things on record. He's given us, instead of saying all those things, we got to start speaking what is what's written in the Bible. Because it's what God is doing, it, what God wants to establish in our life. This overflow, this is what God wants to establish in our life. So don't talk and puff up your issues. Don't do that. But give God the best part of your life. Give him the best part of what you produce. Give him the best part and then watch what he does with that. Amen. Anybody want to live in God's inheritance? Yes, God. I'm talking about his inheritance. Come on and say it's offering time. Yes, yeah, so you got to be careful what you say. You, you can't say what everything Facebook, the slang tell you. You can't say I'm poor because that thing can come on you. You can't say I'm weak and I'm, I'm sick and all these things. That stuff come on you. But if you say I'm blessed, somebody say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Somebody say I'm living in increase. Living. Come, somebody say I'm living in, in my inheritance. This is what we say. We don't get caught up in slang and, and things what other people are saying. But I got to say things that's going to be established in my life. Everything you say is going to be established in your life. Do you believe that? Yes. Let me share one more verse and I'm a, we're going to move on. Numbers uh, 14 and 26. Because I want to show you what God said in the word. Numbers 14 and 26. Yes, Lord. Numbers 14 and 26. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, How long must I put up with the wicked community? And, it com and, and this is in the New and Living Translation. Excuse me. How long, the 27th verse in Numbers 14 and 27. How long must I put up with, with this wicked community and its complaints about me? Yes, I have heard the complaints of the Israelites are making against me. Now tell them this. Now tell them this. Surely, excuse me, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things. I heard you say. Huh? I heard you say. What? I heard you say. Watch what you say. Watch what you say. Watch what. Did you read what the Bible said? Did you read it? Did, come on, y'all were scared to say that. Why y'all got quiet on that? Come on, we got to move forward in the sermon. Y'all, come on, let's read the 28th verse again. Now, let's read this together. Now, tell them this. <laughs> yes, Lord. Now, tell them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord. Come on. I will do to you the very things I I heard you say. Record that, beloved. Watch what you say. God is going to do what you say. Watch what you say. Come on, it's offering time. Give God some praise. Amen. 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 We're going to play a song and we'll be back with you. We'll serve you. Those in the house of God, and we'll be back and pray over our offering in Jesus' name. Yes, Amen. Amen. Watch what you say. That is my Come on, put your phone on. Yes, Lord. 
thank you, Jesus. Come on, extend your hand to your seed that's sown. Father, we thank you for every seed that was sown. And even those that have not to give but desire to give. Father, bless the seed that's sown, Lord. And we speak increase in this seed that was sown. And we speak increase in the giver's heart, in the giver's mind, in the giver's spirit. Bless this. May it flourish in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give it back to him, Lord, a hundredfold. In Jesus' name. Give it back to him a hundredfold. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us in worship service today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please listen carefully for our IC updates and announcements. All are invited to join us every Wednesday on Zoom at 7 p.m. as Pastor Robinson teaches us the Word of God on a more intimate level. This interactive Bible study encourages all to deepen your knowledge of God and your relationship with Jesus Christ. So join us and be blessed. Um, we will be having Bible study in the church this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Yes, Lord. Would you like for your child, grandchild, niece, or nephew to learn about God and the Bible on a level in which they can understand? If so, please have them join us on Thursdays of each week for our Kids on Zoom meeting. These interactive youth Bible studies start at 7 p.m. Please feel free to share the link with family and friends. The Apostle Paul teaches us in 1 Timothy that we should pray for all people and ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them. So join us every Saturday at 9 a.m. on Zoom as we do just that, interceding on behalf of our neighborhoods and the nation. As a reminder, we have continued our early morning prayers Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. You can join us using the same link for Bible study or Saturday morning prayer. Amen. If you'd like to receive all the IC updates and reminders sent by our media group, please fill out one of our connect cards or feel free to send your contact information to support at icministries.org. As a reminder, all of our regular uh, ministry meetings can be joined at their scheduled times using the login information on our Facebook page or website. These are announcements for the week. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. Again, uh, be mindful, uh, just in addition to the announcements, on March 14th, uh, Saturday at 10, we'll be at Robles Park uh, with the kids over there doing a paint with a twist uh, at Robles Park. Uh, April 14th, again, we will be at uh, Belma Heights, Phase 3. Uh, excuse me, March. Uh, March, March 14th, excuse March, me, March 14th, 18th. March 18th, yes, thank you, I have to keep, March 18th, thank you, and thank you, my sister, March 18th, we'll be at uh, Robles Park uh, at 10, doing a paint with a twist, so come on out, uh, we're planning an outdoor revival, more details to follow with that, again, we thank God for all your giving and, and all that you do in Jesus' name. Everybody put your hands together in this place. Let's give God some praise. Yeah, he is worthy. He yeah, is yeah. worthy. Hallelujah. The praise team comes up at this time. Everybody needs just the Lord to rain on them. Too. 
today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
shower down on us, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does anybody want the Lord to shower down on them? Come on, if you really want him to shower down on you, I ask somebody to just say, shower down on me, Lord. Come on, I wish somebody would cry out and shout, shower down, God. Lord, shower down your blessings, oh God. Shower down your peace, oh God. Lord, as we lift up our praise to you, shower down on us, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mark 9. Mark 9 and 16. Again, we honor our Lord Jesus Christ today and we give him praise and glory. We honor each and every one of you. We thank God. We thank God. Our sisters 
uh, the young ladies met uh, Friday here in the, in the church, and they had a great time on Friday. Uh, the, the lesson, they had a great time of fellowship and food, uh, so we thank God for the facilitators for that. Uh, we thank God for them. Uh, Destiny and Jaleesa, we thank God for them putting that together. Come on and give God praise for their efforts and desiring to grow our, our young ladies. And what do they call the sisters? That's what they call? Huh? Sisters? Yeah. Oh, huh? Yes. Sisters? Okay, okay. Oh, extraordinary sisters. Hey, man. So we, they had a great time. They had it set up pretty nice in here. So we thank God for their efforts. We, uh, we expect them more. We expect them more. Yes, Lord. We expect them more. Let's look, Luke, uh, excuse me, Mark 9, 16 through 29. And let me read this from the New and Living Translation. Amen. What is, what is all this arguing about? Jesus asked. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever this spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I ask your disciples, <laughs> the man said, I ask, so I ask your disciples. He said, I ask your disciples. Yes, Lord. Is <laughs> yes, Lord. So I ask your disciples to cast out the evil spirit. But they could, couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, Oh goodness, you what? Faithless. You faithless people. And then it's an exclamation mark. <laughs> so he didn't just say it gradually or calmly. But he said what? You faithless people. How long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Oh, goodness. Man, some people think Jesus was a kind of softy. They think that he would say things that, was, that wouldn't jolt your feelings. They, they think that he wouldn't say things that would cause correction and make you look and pay attention. Somebody say, look and pay attention. Look. Yes, Lord. Jesus said, how long must I be with you? How long must I, what, put up? Goodness. How long must I put up with you? <laughs> Goodness. What kind of Jesus we been, what we've been talking about? What kind of Jesus we expecting? You know, we like to put up, uh, put a picture in our mind that he's soft just because we say love and forgiveness. We Put an image in our mind that he's soft and mushy. But you listen to the conversation that Jesus is telling the, the group of right here. How long must I put up with you? Bring the what? Bring that boy. Bring that boy to me. He said, bring that boy to me. That's not just Carla talking. This is the word. It sounds like Carla. Sound like something she'll say. But Jesus said, bring the boy to me. He didn't say, bring the young man. He said, bring the boy. Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion. And he fell to the ground, wreathing and foaming at the mouth. How long, Jesus said, how long, the question he asked, how long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy, the child often throws him, the, excuse me, the spirit often throws him into the fire or into the water. 
trying to kill him. You and that's what we we often say that you have to be careful what's pushing your child. And when you're looking at your children, you think you're fighting your child. And it's not the child that you're fighting. It's a spirit that pushes the child to react the way that they're reacting. So don't get angry and frustrated at the child that you're looking at. There's a spirit that's driving the child. He said this spirit often throws him into the fire or into water trying to kill him. Don't you think these spirits are trying to kill your children? They're trying to kill your husband, your wife. The enemy comes to what? To steal what? To kill and to what? Destroy. These things, that's what the enemy is trying to do in your house. The enemy is trying to do into your mind, into your life. He's trying to kill him. Now look at what else he said. Have mercy on us and help us. And you heard what he said to Jesus. If you can. If you can. He said, I went to your disciples. Now I'm coming to you. I heard about you. But if you can, help me. If you can, help me. And that's how we live our life sometimes. We'll do some things that looks churchy, that appear religious, but in our mind we say, if you can. That's why we'll hold things back from God. We'll hold some type of, sur we'll hold some of our surrender back from God. We'll hold some of our submission back to God to, and, live, and live in an if you can life. A lot of our life is if you can. I'm not, I'm not going to give you everything I have because just in case it doesn't work out, I have, to, I have to have one foot in and one foot out because I'm thinking in my mind, if you can. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If you can. The 23rd verse said, but, when, but, but uh, excuse me, what do you mean if I can what did what Jesus said? What do you mean? What do what are you talking about? If I can, what did Jesus ask? Anything is possible. What if a person believes anything? Anything is possible if you believe. Now the father instantly cried out, "What I do believe, but what? But help me overcome my what?" My unbelief. Help me to overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak, he said, I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. Yes, Lord. Then the spirit screamed and threw the boy in, into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd as people said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet. And he stood up. Afterwards, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we cast out that devil? Now, excuse me, that evil spirit. Jesus gave them the answer. He replied, this kind can, this kind can be cast out only by prayer. And another translation says prayer and fasting. Amen. Amen. There's so, there's so much was in this reading. So much was in this reading. But looking at looking
looking at the 24th verse, we would like to pull our thought. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. You know, at first I was, I was contemplating, I was thinking about the unbelief. But it's, it's a lot of people talk about believing. A lot of people talking about talk about I believe. They say it all the time. And they'll live their life on that basis of I believe. And the I believe is great. But the I believe, the belief isn't what's going to keep us. It's not. Today, let's use for a thought, Lord, help me in the other places of my life. Lord, help me in the other places, the other places of my life. The unbelief is the other places. I believe but help my unbelief. The Lord, help me in the other places. Yes, Lord. There are some other places, beloved, of my life that we, we need to deal with. There are some other places. You know, and as we said, religious folks, can this man can be identified almost as a religious person. Because he said, I believe. And there's a lot of people that come to church. A lot of people that come to church and they come just to say that I, I came to church. They log on to prayer and say that I went to prayer. They log on to Bible study and say I went to Bible study. But then there's a, there's a type of people that, that goes past just going through the actions. There's a type of people that go past just going through the motions. But there's more to it just being, than just being a religious person. A religious person is just religious, just a practice of, of doing something. It's a practice. We get in a routine coming to church. We know what time and what day we expect it to go into assembly. But that's not being the church. That's not being the body of Christ. That's being a religious person. You know, and there's many religious people that are suffering from spiritual diseases. There's many religious people that are suffering from spiritual diseases. And let's go further because, if you know, religious folks struggle with living and walking in an authentic life. They struggle with walking and being original. Religious person, they go by, they, one day they're this and the next day they're that. They go by whatever the fashion of, of either social media in the church or even the actions when they attend services. But religious folks, they deal with spiritual diseases and they become to live a sick life, a sick spiritual life. But they struggle with walking in a passion to serve. They struggle walking in, in the passion to love. I'm talking about religious folks. Now, this might not be for you, but this might be for the religious folks. Religious folks struggle to worship because Jesus said, they that worship me must worship me in what? In spirit and what else? And in truth. They struggle worshiping Jesus in spirit and in truth. Religious folks does. They struggle to live. They struggle finding life. Religious folks. Yes, Lord. They had quite understood the almighty power of God. Religious folks, they had quite understood the almighty power of God. Yes, Lord. But look at 1 Thessalonians 5 and 19. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 19. Come on, we're going to cut through real quick right here. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 19 says, quench not the spirit. Beloved, that's what God doesn't want us to, when we accept God's Holy Spirit, when we accept and receive the Holy Ghost in our life, God wants to use us to build in our community. God wants to use us to build in our family. God wants to use us to build on our job. He wants us to use, he wants to use us to add value. 
into places where there is no spiritual value. There might not be any spiritual value in your family. But God will raise you up out of that family and put his anointing in you. And then he'll use you in that family. He'll use you in that job. God wants to add, use you to add value. Come on, look at Matthew 16. Come on, we're going to cut cross. Come on and bear with me real quick so we can do some building. Matthew 16 and 18. Yes, Lord. Matthew 16 and 18. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yes, yeah, so the building that God, that Jesus expects us to live in, the building upon this rock, and this is you, beloved. God expects you to be a part of the building, the place where he's trying to get the world to become. But we have to be at a place of total surrender and submission to God. Anybody surrendered here yet? Anybody surrendered yet? Look at 1 Samuel 12, and we'll, we'll get ready to go back to our text. But look at 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 12. Yes, Lord. Can he use you? Amen. Can God use you? Amen. 1 Samuel 12 and 6 through 7. And I'm going to read this in the New and Living Translation. Yes, Lord. God wants to use you. It was the Lord who appointed Moses and Aaron. Samuel continued. He brought your ancestors out of the land of Egypt. Now stand here quietly before the Lord as I remind you of all the great things the Lord, what? Has done for who? For you and your ancestors. But for you, the great things God has done for you. This is the, the picture that God wants us to be reminded that he's appointed us. And he wants us to be reminded that he's building and he wants to use us. And, it, you know, we think that, that it's a, the need is for certain people. We think that there's a need for only those that can recite the Bible a certain way. We think that there's a need for only those that can pray a certain way. But that's not so. God put in us all a need for him. It is, it, uh, there's a need in, within us, all of us, each and every one of us. But there's some things that we have to allow to be moved out of our life to where God can use us. Look at John 3 and 2. Yes, yeah, so Lord. Somebody say he's inside of me. Yes, Lord, he's inside of me, beloved. He's inside of me. John 3 and 2. Amen. Yes, Lord, look at Nicodemus. He's inside of me. This is God inside of me. This is God inside of me. Yes, Lord, John 3 and 2. The same, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. And no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be what? With except God be what? Be, except God be with you, beloved. Nobody can do these things. Nobody can live like how you live except God be with you. Nobody can love like how you love except God be with you. Nobody can forgive like how you forgive except God be with you. Is God with you today? Yes, yes Lord. Is God with you today? Yes. Come on, now. let's go on. Let's move forward in Acts 1 and 8. Yes, Lord. Somebody say, I know he's with me. I know he's yes, Lord. I know he's with me. Yes, Lord. Acts 1 and 8. And this is a blessed assurance, beloved, to where we have to live in the I know that he's with me. Yes. Yeah, so anybody know that God is with you? Anybody know that his Holy Spirit is with you? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Look at Acts 1 and 8. But you shall what? 
You say, come on and help me. But you shall what? So you shall receive power. You, the promise is that you shall receive, somebody say, you shall receive power. But the, that's not it. But the power comes after. Somebody say after. Yeah, so that's the thing. We have the power comes after. After that, no, come on, help me. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall what? Be witnesses, well, unto me both in what? In Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in where? In Samaria, and in what? And to the uttermost part of the earth. But after the power comes after the Spirit of God, after the Holy Ghost has entered into your soul, after the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord, and this is, we have to have this relationship with God's Spirit. Amen. Amen. We have to have this relationship with God's Spirit. That's why, you know, God left His Holy Spirit on earth for us. You don't have to walk around like you don't have help. Like you done have, he said, I'm going to leave. When I go, I'm going to send you the comforter. You have so much help right here. I say you have so much help right here, but we have to use the help. When after the Holy Ghost come upon you, then you have the power. Somebody say, I have the power. Yes, Lord, after the Holy Ghost comes on you, you have the power. And when God's Spirit comes on you, you talking about fire. Yes, so you talking about a fire. Jeremiah said it like this. It's like fire shut up in my bones. Anybody have that type of fire in your bones right now? You, anybody have that type of fire in your life right now? Jeremiah said it's just like fire. When the power of God comes into your life, it gives you the power. He gives you the power to love. He gives you the power to act right. Yes, yeah, right. we're talking about a fire that we walk in, a fire that we love in, a fire that we forgive in. Somebody up there say, don't put the fire out. Don't put the fire out. Whatever you do, don't put the fire out. Yes, yeah, so Lord, don't put the fire out. Don't put the fire out. Beloved, your whole life changes when you put when you put the fire out. When you allow the fire to go dim in your spiritual life and you become religious. There's no time for religious folks. God said, He said they out of their mouth, they say they what? They love me, but their hearts are what? Are far from me. It's not time just to talk about this thing. It's time to live this thing. It's time if God is giving you the power to love why don't you love if God is giving you the power to forgive why don't you forgive somebody say don't put the fire out yes Lord don't put the fire out don't put the fire out Yes, so back in our text, in Mark, he talked about, in this occasion, Lord, help my unbelief. And then, beloved, I came to the side to where there was places in our life and places in this man's life that needs to be dealt with. And there's other places in our life. We'll buff up and talk about the good that we live in, the good that we walk in, the good that we talk in. Somebody asks you, say, how you doing? doing today, sister? How you doing today, brother? You'll say, well, I'm blessed and highly favored. But you know your life is all in shambles. You know your life is all in hell. But you, you will put up an image like we're serving God. But we're really not. We're serving the issues. We're serving the problems. We're serving our emotions. We're serving our feelings. But it's time for us to deal. Allow Jesus to deal with the other places in my life. Somebody say, Lord, deal with the other places in my life. And when, beloved, when I'm talking about the other places in your life, I'm talking about the places where you don't want anybody to know what's in your life. Yes, Lord. Can I get a witness there? You got some secret places that nobody even had been dealt with. But it's time for God to deal with the secret places. Somebody say, Lord, deal with the other places in my life. I'm talking about the places where no Nobody. I don't want anybody to find out. But Lord, I want to give that to you. Nobody knows. But no, Lord, I want to give that thing to you. Somebody shall, Lord, deal with the other places. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's another side of you. There's another side of that man. Yeah, he said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I believe there's another side of you. I said, there's another side of you. Sometimes you come into church and you come to Bible study and appear to be one way, but you know there's areas to where you hadn't surrendered yet. That's why we've been praying. Lord, I want to surrender today. Take me to a greater degree of surrender. I want to surrender more today than I did yesterday. Somebody help me say, Lord, I surrender. I want to surrender more today than I did yesterday. I want to surrender more today than I did last month. There's some areas in our life, beloved. We can't be delivered until we give God the other places. Somebody say, Lord, walk in the other places in my life. Yes, Lord, the other places where we need to be delivered. We say we've been, Lord, I believe. I got my Bible. I got my name in the Bible. I got the family, all the other things. I even have one on the coffee table. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Lord, but the place where I struggle at, the place where my anger, the place where I doubt you, the place where I don't trust because of the past pain, because of the failed relationship, because of the financial Lord, help my unbelief. I need help in the other places. Anybody need help in the other places? The places where nobody knows, but you crying out to God at night to where your tears had become your pillows. Yes, Lord, he heard you. He knows what you've been struggling with. Somebody say, Lord, deliver me from the other stuff that nobody knows, but you know. Yes, Lord. That's what I need to be delivered from. Yes, Lord. I, I, I look good dressed up. I can dress up mess pretty good. But, Lord, I need some deliverance. Anybody in here need deliverance? I said anybody in here need a breakthrough. Anybody in here need release from God? Lord, help my to believe. I believe you. That's why I brought my boy to you. He said, I know what you can do, but Lord, I struggle with it because I heard the disciples and I heard what you've done on the other side. I heard what you did, the miracles you performed, the devils you cast out, the lame that you healed. That's why I'm bringing my son to you. I'm bringing my boy to you. I, I brought him to the disciples and they couldn't do anything. Come on, look at Romans. Look at Romans 8. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Romans 8 and 38. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody say, I believe. Yes, Lord. But help my unbelief. Yes, Lord. Romans 8 and 38. For I am persuaded. Yes, Lord. That neither death, nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to what? Shall be able to what? Separate us from what? The love of God, which is what? In Christ Jesus, who? Our Lord. Yeah, so that's what the Lord is looking for. When you're persuaded, beloved, he said, I'm, I am persuaded. We have to be persuaded. We have to persuade ourselves. We have to be persuaded that God's word is true, that God is a deliverer, that he sent Jesus to die on our, or for our sin, that the Holy Ghost is a power of God to them that believe. We have to believe these things, and we have to be persuaded. Anybody out here persuaded today? You got to be persuaded, beloved. When you become persuaded, your life becomes authentic. You don't have to be fake. You don't have to be phony. But your life becomes authentic. You don't serve God for somebody. You don't serve God for anybody. But you serve God because it's the right thing to do. You serve God because he's real. You don't serve him because it benefits. You don't serve him because what he could do or who you're part of. But you want to serve him because he's real. 
Anybody want to live an authentic life? Yes, Lord. To where your reality is authentic. All your reality, it becomes true. That's when your life is authentic. When your life, everything about you is, is true. And you can look at people that struggle being authentic. Everything they like, all around the atmosphere is lies. Everything about their conversation is lies. They struggle being authentic. But when you become an authentic person, when you're persuaded, anybody in here been persuaded? I said, is that anybody in here been persuaded that nothing shall separate me from the love of Christ? Anybody in here persuaded? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm talking about your reality becomes true. Everything about your present day reality, yes, it becomes true. I don't have to fake it and be a phony. I love God and he loves me. Yes, Lord. That's why we got to put away that religious spirit. Yes, Lord. Come on and say, I cast that religious spirit off. I cast it off. Yes, Lord. My life is real. I live in truth. I said, I cast that religious spirit off of me. No religious spirit. Yes, Lord. They that, look at, look at, look at uh, 2 Timothy. Look at 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 3 and 7. Thank you, Lord. 2 Timothy 3 and 7. This is religious folks, beloved. Look at this. This is what they do. Ever learning and never able, able to what? To come to the knowledge of what? Of the truth. They struggle. They forever learning. They forever, oh, I didn't know this. Oh, I didn't know this. They forever learning. They forever submitting themselves to a lie to where they forever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. These are religious folks, beloved. There's no time to be religious to in this hour. Don't you say Jesus said it? He said all things are possible in your life, beloved. All things are possible in your life. Stop living a life to where you don't think nothing's impossible, nothing's possible. And that's what we've been struggling with. We think that only certain people can get into the presence of God. We think only certain people can be blessed. But Jesus said all things are possible. Somebody shout all things are possible. You got to live in the all things are possible, beloved. You got to live in and then you got to declare and when you look at your children you got to say all things are possible when you look at your husband your wife you got to say what what do you have to say somebody in the room say it somebody in the room say it Say it till you persuade it. All things. You got to say it in your finances. You got to say it on the job. Before you go into the job, you got you know the battles that you've been fighting. You got to say all things are possible. Yes, Lord. Regardless of what you've seen and what you heard or what you may think, you got to go by what the word said. Jesus said all things are possible. Yes, Lord. And I'm talking about it in your life. Somebody tell the person next to you, tell them in your life, all things are possible in your life. I'm talking about it in your life. I'm talking about in your life. All things are possible. Yes, Lord. All things are possible. And beloved, when we do this, we begin to strengthen our desires. Yes, Lord. We begin to strengthen our desires. Yes, Lord. We begin to strengthen our desires. That's why we, he said, I'll give you the, the what? I'll give you what? The desires of your what? But if your desires isn't there and they're not strengthened, how can you receive what's in your heart? You can't, and that's what we're struggling with. Are you all ready to get there? Yes, Lord. Strengthen my desires. Somebody say, Lord, strengthen my desires. Strengthen my desires. Yes, Lord. Beloved, we're going to get there today. Yes, Lord. But we got to challenge the weakened places in our life. Every weak place in your life. Don't let it 
Every stay week. Every week play. I know what Paul said. He said, Lord, I'm praying that you remove this, this thorn in my flesh. Jesus said, no. He said, my grace is sufficient. Yeah, in your weakness I'm made strong. You got to learn. Lord, strengthen. Strengthen my weakness. Lord, strengthen my weakness. Anything in you weak, I dare you pray right now. Lord, strengthen my weakness. Yes, Lord. Strengthen it, Lord. Yes, Lord. Beloved, we got to challenge the weak in places. We got to challenge the weak in places in our life. We got to challenge that stuff. Don't let, you, don't let it stay like that. But we have to challenge the weak in places in our life. Because let me tell you, remind yourself of who you serve. You serve the El Shaddai. You serve the Almighty God. Is the Almighty in your life? I said, is God himself Almighty in your life? Have you seen him as the El Shaddai? Has you seen him as the Almighty God? He's bigger and larger than anything that you can ever encounter. Yes, Lord. I'm talking about the El Shaddai God. I'm talking about the El Shaddai God that are used even if I have a small amount, God will use it. I said even, he said in Acts 3, the disciples was at the gate. They was going to church in Acts 3 and they there was a man sitting there and they was, he wanted something. He was begging, but they said, so he asked for alms and the disciples said, silver and gold have I none. I don't have money to give give you but he says such as I have give I to thee yes Lord you might not have all the money but such as I have if you got whatever you have give it to God and give it to the people because you got something tell the neighbor next to you you have something tell them you have something I wish you tell them you got something and you know what that something is it's the anointing of God you should be giving God pray. It's an anointing of God. I said you got the anointing. That's what you give them. That's what you give the issue. That's what you give the neighbors. That's what you give your Jerusalem, your Judea, your Samaria. You got the power of God. Somebody say I got the power. I got the power. Yes Lord. Yes Lord. Yes Lord. Such as I am. Yes, Lord. We got to get rid of that stuff that done choked our faith. And we don't put things and allow things in our atmosphere. We've allowed things in our mind, things in our house to choke the faith. Yes, Lord. But we got to make it up in our mind that I can't have nothing around me that's going to choke my faith. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let the children. I'm not going to let the spouse. I'm not going to let the finances. I'm not going to let the children. Oh, nothing shall be around me to choke my faith. Yes, Lord. Any convict, any could any persuaded folks out there. Yes, Lord. Everything around me. Everything around you, beloved. Everything around you should speak faith. Everything in your house. I'm helping you unbelief now. I'm attacking that. Everything in your house, everything in your atmosphere have to speak faith. I say everything. I know what you said, I believe, but we got to deal with the other places. Everything around me, the music, the people, nothing can be around me to train the faith. Somebody say, I got to get rid of the things that's choking my faith. I say, I got to get rid of it. I'm sorry. I, we was together last year, but today we got to be. I got to do what God said. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, beloved, God wants to deal with the voids in our life that in other places. He wants to deal with the voids. Yes, Lord. He wants to deal with the voids. Yes, Lord. And if he deal with the voids in our life, they'll, they'll 
they'll take us into the other places. You know, and the things that need to be recovered. There are some things that need to be recovered because of the other, the, the damage that the other places has caused us. There are some things that need to be recovered because of the damage in our life, because of the other places. But beloved, today I'm challenging you. I'm charging you to God, give God the other places. Give God the other places. Yes, Lord. Give God the other places and watch what's being recovered. Your children will be recovered. I say your love life will be recovered. I say hope will be recovered. I say deliverance will be recovered. I say prosperity will be recovered. I say healing will be recovered. But you got to give God the other places that are in your life. Yes, Lord. And then when God, when Jesus deliver you, he said, out, he said bring the son to me and I'm going to cast him out. And Satan will have to flee from him forever. And when Jesus deliver deliver you. You're delivered forever. If Jesus delivers you, I said you're delivered forever. Are you willing to allow Jesus to break Satan's power? You got to give Jesus the other places. You can't hold nothing back. That secret sin. Yes, Lord. That secret motive. You got to give that thing to Jesus in order for Satan, in order for him to break Satan's power. Come on and stand on your feet and give God praise. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Beloved, your life can be better without unbelief. Your life can be better without unbelief. Your life you don't have to persuade people that you believe. Only people that say that are the ones that are struggling in the faith. Only people say that I believe they're struggling in their faith. It's the ones that, are, that are give their unbelief to Jesus. The ones that are willing to be totally transparent to their Savior. You know, as a child, when this, this child was had bad habits. Jesus asked the young, how long has he been like this? He said, since he was a child. You have to be careful for what we allow the children, the bad habits, to come upon the children. That demon grew stronger. He said, I had that, I had this, I had possession of this child when he was a child. And the demon grew stronger. He said, how long have the demon been in that child? Since he was a child. We have to be careful what bad habits we allow to grow. In our children. In our marriages. In our houses. What bad habits are we allowing to grow? Because the ultimate desire that Satan wants is to destroy that child. To kill that child and to destroy that marriage and to destroy you. So you got to give, we have to give the bad habits. We got to give the bad habits to Jesus. We can't be afraid to expose those things to our Savior. Those are the other places, the ones that we are ashamed of. The ones that we we'll, we embarrass of. We don't want our family to find out all this stuff is happening in our house. The other places. We don't want our family and our friends to find out all the stuff that is going on in my mind. The other places. But we got to be set free and allow Jesus to break Satan's power off our life. To deal with the other places. The other places in our life aren't just going to go away. We have to give them to the power of God. The almighty power of God. Yes, Lord. Our children are struggling with chronic diseases. Of evil. 
When we allow those demons and bad habits to sit and grow in them. They're suffering from chronic spiritual diseases. And they couldn't come out if they want to. But the person that you're seeing is not them. You're seeing and experiencing the spirit that's driving them. Lord, help the other places in my life. Going to the other places in my life that I struggle with, that I don't want anyone to find out about, that I gave only to you. To that soul that's not saved and had not made Jesus their Savior. I challenge you to give your soul to Jesus. Submit and surrender to him. Surrender. Is his is your soul is his already. You've been bought with the price. I don't believe anybody can sell their soul. Like what you hear on social media and these things of illusions that the world tried to give. It's not our soul to give. How can we sell something that's not ours? It's the Lord's. Now we decide to make allegiances to things and that's something different. That's an allegiance. That's a covenant. If Jesus had been your Savior, surrender, beloved. Give yourself to Jesus today. Father, we thank you and we give you praise and glory. Lord, touch that soul that had not made you as Savior, that had not received you as Lord, that had not repented of their sin. Father, touch that, that soul. Touch that spirit. May they yield to you. May they, oh God, submit to you. In Jesus' name. Work in the other places of their life, Lord. Work in the other places of their life. The ones that makes them, Lord, live in insomnia. The one that makes them deal with them. Hard to deal with themselves. Lord, deal with the other places in our life. Help our unbelief today. In Jesus' name, amen.